today's Winthrop King Institute interview series, we're speaking to Rwandese film director, writer, and producer Kivu Ro Rosa. Ro Rosa has won multiple awards for his features and short films, including Grey Matter, Mr. Ro Rosa's first feature film, in which he, and here I'm quoting Frida Ekato, contemplates the effects of the 1994 Rwandan genocide upon the psyche and the social world. In addition to the genocide, Ro Rosa addresses other important topics in Africa, such as homosexuality or the complicated relationship between contemporary Africans and Westerners. Mr. Ro Rosa, let me first thank you for joining us for this third installment of the Winthrop King online interview series. This interview will be conducted concomitantly in French and in English. And to begin with, could you tell me about your current film projects? Um, well, right now, I have, um, I have a few film projects on the table. I have a film that's in post-production, which I shot. Um, I've been shooting since 2000 and 2010. And uh, it's, a, it's a film about um, uh, the working title is Pilgrimages all the pilgrim so we haven't decided yet but it's about it's about travel really and and it's about uh, a character who who visits um who travels so much to the point that he he wonders why he's still doing it because he doesn't get any pleasure from it and it's shot in in, in 11 countries and it's a, it's a bit of an existential kind of film quite experimental but um yeah so that's in post production and i uh, in may we're shooting um uh, a film that I'm producing with uh, with my um, business partner, who usually work, works on my film as an editor or co-producer, and and so he's directing his, uh, a feature film that I'm producing, and that one is going to be about um, it's called Love in the Age of Fear, and it's about a couple um, Portuguese British couple that's um, uh, that's uh, surviving. Uh, the gentrification of a neighborhood where they always thought that they were middle class and and all of a sudden realized that actually they were yeah they were flirting with uh, poverty without realizing it and then and then we hope to film um, a film that I would be directing hopefully in November or March next year and uh, it would be the first installment of um, of a trilogy on uh, on women on three women at the moment of crisis yeah so so yeah, there's a lot going on at the moment. Wonderful. Can you tell us what led you to become a filmmaker? Well, my um, well, my first love was literature. I wanted to um, I wanted to write novels. I've been working on one for some years, and but uh, when I was about fifteen, sixteen, I I watched one. Um, one film from uh, Ivory Coast called uh, In the Name of the Christ and this film shocked me how unusual it was in, um, in the way it treated such a, um, a, uh, such a difficult subject as faith and so it was a satirical comedy about uh, a pig keeper who decides that um, he's had enough of the mockeries and, uh, and the humiliations in his village and decides to become uh, Magloire the first, a cousin of Jesus, and Jesus himself. And, and he even goes as far as convincing people to crucify him. And, uh, but it's, it's a beautiful film. And, uh, and I was, yeah, so I, I was shocked the way they were, he, he was mocking, the director was mocking the, uh, the believers and uh, the way he was uh, using light and, and the camera work. And yeah, so that film, after seeing um, very easy, like black and white, um, hero, villain kind of films for years. That film was quite, um, was quite an eye-opening moment for me. And, uh, and then one year right after, I saw another French film called La Nuit by Cédric Kahn. And, um, and this film also, after watching that film, I, I, I really said to myself, I'd like to communicate using this media. I'd like to, um, because it just seemed like the perfect, um, the perfect, um, uh, merging of uh, of so many uh, uh, art forms, like the music was there, the performance, they, like the theatre, they, uh, uh, and then and then intellectually because it was, uh, the, this film was about a, a philosopher who uh, falls madly in love with a seventeen year old in his class and then loses everything, and and I thought that it was a uh, film was uh, was quite uh, the, the media that um, could 
help me express all these um, all these topics or you know, all these themes that I care about. Yeah, so it was around that, that age when I decided that I w- yeah I would be a filmmaker no matter what. So when did you decide to address the genocide in your work? Well, I I didn't want to address the genocide uh, per se, but I wanted to address trauma because um, the genocide is such a vast subject, and uh, and it all it always seems to me. Um, uh, sometimes intellectually irresponsible to address uh, such a vast subject without uh, having all the aspects of it. On how do we end up with a genocide? If if you do, you don't go and dig in history and be um, and be honest with yourself, even if it, even if it hurts. So I, 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 w- I wanted mostly to work on uh, on on trauma, and the. Um, I had made short films that were about like, all sorts of um, all sorts of different kind of topics and, and themes, but the but at the moment I was trying to make my first feature length film, and um, and the, the this project Grey Matter was uh, was the most mature one. I kept going back to it, and then I just the genocide and its consequences just seemed to be uh, unavoidable and. Um, in Rwanda, if if you if you are uh, uh, an, an artist or, or, an, or an intellectual, or it just it, it's it's an overwhelming reality, and and you, I don't think you can really move on without uh, uh, without having to uh, to um, to work on this on, on to, to work on this issue. Yeah. So at some point, I felt like I was uh, I was going back to it. I was trying to um, I was trying to to do other types of films but I just yeah but I needed to get done with that and then move on it was uh, yeah it was the best uh, yeah it was it was the only way actually maybe it was unavoidable it felt it felt unavoidable not that it was therapeutic or anything I don't believe in that kind of uh, like yeah films being therapeutic you know?